Welcome back. So much violence against police, and it continues to surge. 13 police officers were shot across four states in a 24 hour period on Friday alone. Two officers died, and 11 others were injured. This year alone, 58 law enforcement officers have been shot in the line of duty, compared to 29 during the same time last year. Store owners are now forced to take extra precautions to prevent theft. One Walmart in Florida reportedly locking up their stakes with security wire. Can you imagine? Joining us right now is the Washington Examiner editor-in-chief, Hugo Gurdon. Hugo, thanks very much for being here this morning. I mean, from uh, smash and grabs uh, to the lawlessness across the board, uh, at murder, 25-year highs at leading cities across the country. Your thoughts on what is taking place and how to stop this? You know, Nancy Pelosi said in an interview yesterday, make no mistake, community safety is our responsibility. And those words should come back to haunt Democrats in the 2022 elections later this year, because communities are less safe and Democrats are responsible. You know, the murder rate jumped 30 percent in when the Democrats were encouraging violent rioters and uh, anti-police riots in 2020. They've, con they've continued to rise in 2021. Twelve major cities set murder records. These are not coincidences. This is because the Democrats have sided with the criminal classes and they have encouraged people to believe that there is that, that, that the police are predators. And not surprisingly, uh, people take them at their word and they are attacking the police. And the statistics from last, just last week are appalling, the ones that you just cited. And, but it's not, there's a kind of broken window aspect to this as well. The worst possible crimes are obviously the shootings and the killings of, of law enforcement. But right at the much lesser crimes, the shoplifting, the Democrats are, in, you know, Dem prosecutors all across the country are decriminalizing certain activities. Shoplifting is one. You know, in some places, it, I think it's Colorado now, that it's, it's only a misdemeanor to carry enough fentanyl uh, to be in possession of en enough fentanyl to kill thousands of people. Basically, what's happening across the country is that left, the left wing, amongst them, in many elected Democrats, are encouraging people to believe yep. that crime is OK and, Demo and, and police are the predators. This is having an enormous cultural effect. And you can see the whites of Democrats' eyes now that they're trying to, most of them, like Nancy Pelosi, are trying to back away and say, you know, that defunding police is not uh, official policy. But then you have Cory Bush say, continuing to uh, yeah. say that, you know, that defunding police is what they want. They, they talk out of both sides of their mouths. And what you're seeing now is the result. Well, unfortunately, bad, bad policy equals bad outcomes is what I always say. But it really strikes me, Hugo, that here you have inept, ineptitude, bad policy, uh, creating havoc for American families. And yet, what do we see? Lawlessness of spying on a sitting president. Hillary Clinton, we've spoken about this for a long time, many years, Hugo, and now we have evidence that it, this was all one political candidate trying to take down her opponent, but using federal agencies to do so. Real quick, your thoughts on what, what we see it, of, in terms of evidence of the Clinton campaign being able to mine the data of a sitting president. Yeah, it, it, it is. It's absolutely appalling, and, and obviously the truth must be must come out. The idea that the apparatus of the federal state should be used through contractors, however it's done, should be used yeah. to spy by one party on another party's candidate, and then when yeah. that other party wins to spy on the presidency, is an absolute outrage, and, uh, and, and it's an appalling right, political let's... scandal, and it needs to be got got at. Please. Before you go, some good news. Masks are coming off across the country and the emergency declaration that has been in place since March of 2020. We are seeing movement to remove it. Roger Marshall, senator from Kansas, is bringing a bill down which will remove and end this uh, emergency around COVID. Here's what he told me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures Watch.
We have two opportunities on the Senate floor this week. One is to stop President Biden's declaration of emergency, the COVID declaration of emergency. And number two is to stop Dr. Fauci's Medicare vaccine mandate. It is time for us to take the power and control of our everyday lives out of the hands of Joe Biden and Dr. Fauci. Americans are ready to turn the page and, and live their own lives. Hugo Gordon, real quick, do you think the emergency is close to be ending? Where are we in this pandemic? The emergency in reality has been over for a, a, a while. I think we're getting to it. Again, you can see the whites of the Democrats' eyes. There are only six states now that have mask mandates, and they're tumbling because everybody wants to get back to normal life. And, uh, you know, the Democrats are again on the wrong side of public opinion on this. All right, Hugo, we'll be following all of this. Great to see you this morning, sir. Hugo Gordon joining us Thank you. this morning.